Hello everyone. This video is about a general anatomy. So today's topic is about general anatomical features of a joint. So I'll be talking about joints under following headings: the general introduction, then the classification of joints, and I'll be going in detail about the synovial type of joint and their classification, then the blood and nerve supply. and lastly but not the least the applied aspects related to the joints we know that human body is made up of skeletal system so skeletal system includes both bone and cartilage by definition joints is a junction or an area or a union between two or more bones so wherever it, sometimes there can be two bones articulating or there can be more than two bones so this area where the bones are articulating will be called as the joints so what is the function of joints we all know that joints are very important for movements so they it's a device which permit movements but there is an exception there are some joints which are immovable uh, especially these are more uh, present in children compared to the adults so this immovable joint the purpose is for growth so that's why these kind of joints are more present in child so that will help them in the growth in the lengthening of the height and also the bone so this occurs till the puberty and later ossification takes place and this area will be ossified into a bone so which i'll be talking about those immovable joints as i go forward now coming to the classification these they are broadly classified under structural and functional so structural class classification there are three main types that is fibrous cartilaginous and synovial then coming to functional it depending upon the movements as i told most of the bones uh, that is not the bones the joints mainly help in movement okay so the joints which main function is for the movement they are classified under diarthrosis those joints are mainly used for free movements but there are certain joints where the movements are limited so those are classified under amphiarthrosis and as i mentioned earlier there are some ex exception that some joints might be immovable their main purpose is for the growth so they are classified under synarthrosis So the same thing, synarthrosis, amphiarthrosis, and diarthrosis. So if we compare with the structural classification, the most of the fibrous joint they come under their synarthrosis, but some are slightly movable. But most of them are immovable. Amphiarthrosis slightly movable. So under that, most of the cartilaginous joints will come under that. So diarthrosis freely movable. So examples are synovial joints. so let us know about each type fibrous joints this is a structural classification so fibrous the name only tells that it is made up of dense connective tissue a fibrous tissue so under that there are three subtypes sutures syndesmosis and gomphosis sutures you all know that they are peculiarly present in the skull so there are different sutures you know the names coronal sagittal lambdoid okay so these sutures are they come under fibrous joints and they are totally immovable so they have they have to be classified under synarthrosis and again sutures according to their shape it is divided into different areas the shape here mainly is the bony margin so how they are articulating how they are joining how they are union the union between the bony margins so depending upon the shape of the bony margins there are different uh, types so they are serrated plain denticulate or squamous or skin dialysis so this picture shows the different types so there are some sutures where bony margins can be just a plain so they will be they will be straight okay so one of the example is the palatine which you see on the hard palate the two two palatine process when they are fusing so when you see the bony margins they are just straight so these are called as plain sutures 
some might be serrated a very good example if you see the skull the corona sutures the bony margins will be serrated then uh, squamous type which is where the edges will be beveled so this can be seen uh, between the uh, the bones between that is temporal and the parietal bone so that is an example for squamous type then skin diaesis where it is like wedge and groove which is a very good example is the sphenoid bone and the vomer so uh, a sharp edge wedge shaped uh, bone will be uh, articulating with a groove so some might be denticulate so the picture shows so how it looks so where the bony margins so these are seen in especially a very good example is the lambdoid sutures so these are the classification or the types under sutures depending upon the shape of the bony margins the next is syndesmosis so here the bones are connected by a membrane a sheet okay so it is which is called as interosseous membrane or sometimes it can be a ligament also so these joints are slightly movable very good example is the interosseous membrane which you see between the radius and ulna so it mainly uh, assists the superior radio ulna joint so if you see the forearm bones so there is a joint at this upper end which is called the superior radio ulna joint then also at the inferior point which is called as inferior radio ulna joint and the shaft is connected by interosseous membrane so this inter this syndesmosis between radius and ulna assists the superior radio ulna joint helping in supination and pronation so the mainly it is helped by superior radio ulna joint but it is also assisted by the syndesmosis which is the interosseous membrane connecting the radius and ulna gomphosis is the other type of fibrous joints and it's also called as peg and socket where you can see this type as within the oral cavity that is between the tooth and the gums so the tooth acts like a peg and the groove which is formed by the gums acts like a socket so this is an example which comes under gomphosis so the articulation is by insertion of a conical process which is a tooth into the socket which is nothing but the gums now coming to the next type of joint that is cartilaginous so again the name uh, tells you that these bones are joined these joints where the bones are joined by a cartilage so again there are two subtypes under this primary and secondary primary cartilaginous joints uh, they might use a different term for that which is called a synchondrosis and secondary cartilaginous also called a symphysis so when you see in among these two primary cartilaginous is immovable and they are mainly seen in more in number in children okay and secondary cartilaginous joints are slightly movable so what are the joints which come under i have already mentioned that primary cartilaginous they are very common in children and they are temporary in nature so initially there will be a cartilage which is hyaline type again you know there are different types of cartilage hyaline then uh, elastic and fibrous so in this primary it is mainly united by a plate of hyaline cartilage and these joints are temporary in nature later the hyaline cartilage undergoes ossification and then it is replaced by bone and this process is also called as synostosis uh, example is epiphyseal plate which is mainly seen in children during growing age which helps in the uh, lengthening of the bone and also the uh, increase in the height during the growing period and once the child attains puberty in male and female it will be replaced by a bone and again primary cartilaginous joints i can also be seen in the first chondrosternal joint that is between the first rib okay and between the sternum okay so there also initially it will be cartilaginous so slowly they will be replaced by uh, that is replaced by the bone then also you can see between the sphenoid and the occipital bone which is called a sphenoid occipital joint so these are the few examples which are classified under primary cartilaginous next is secondary cartilaginous so how it is different from primary here again here you see a plate of uh, hyaline cartilage but hyaline cartilage is only seen around the articular surfaces articular surfaces are nothing but the area of the bone where they are meeting up okay so those surfaces are called as articular surfaces so they are covered by hyaline later 
these articular surfaces are joined by a fibrous cartilaginous tissue. So that's why this is totally different from primary cartilaginous. So you can see articular surfaces covered by hyaline cartilage and then they are united by a disc of fibrocartilage. And other feature is when you see primary cartilage, that cartilage is seen in temporary, okay, later it will be uh, ossified and replaced by bone, but secondary is permanent. You see the cartilage and they don't, they are not replaced by the bone. And examples, so all these joints are mainly present at the median plane, at the axis, okay, and they also permit movement, but very limited, not a free movable movements. The example is one that is between the pubic symphysis, that, sorry, between the pubis bone. Pubis bone is a part of a hip bone, so they are joined at the midline, and that joint is called as pubic symphysis. So this is one of the examples for secondary cartilaginous. Then, between the vertebrae, okay, so this, the vertebrae, this is the body of the vertebrae, Okay, so they are joined in between the body of the vertebrae. You see a disc called as intervertebral disc. Okay, so even that intervertebral disc is made up of uh, the secondary cartilaginous. The next is menubrio sternal, that is between the menubrium and the body of the sternum. So there also you see secondary cartilaginous type. Now, coming to the very important joint which mainly helps in movements, a free movements, which uh, they are called a synovial joint. So these are most evolved one. So most of the joints which we see in our human body is synovial type and the most mobile one. And why this is called a synovial joint? Because they have a very special a fluid which helps in lubrication. So this is the uh, one of the feature which helps in the free movements. Okay, so since it contains a fluid in the joint cavity, so that fluid is called a synovial fluid. So that's why these joints are called a synovial joint. So what are the characters of synovial joints? So how do you classify that these joints come under synovial? So there are different features. One I have already told that they have a special liquid or a fluid called as synovial fluid. Not only that, there are other features. One, there is a space in between the bony margins, the, between the articular surfaces, there is a space which is called as joint cavity. And in this joint cavity, you will see the fluid, uh, you will be, uh, that is a synovial fluid. Then the bony margins are covered or lined by a cartilage. So those are called as articular cartilage, which is most commonly it is hyaline type. And this hyaline cartilage acts like a spongy cushion. Okay, so they form a slippery surface, so there won't be any friction between the bony margins. Okay, so that is one of the feature. Then the other feature is you will be seeing a connective tissue surrounding the whole joint, which is called as joint capsule. Okay, so it's a fibrous tissue, uh, irregular type of connective tissue covering the whole joint, which is called as joint capsule. So this joint capsule gives an extra protection and they are richly supplied by blood and uh, nerves, okay, and they are sensitive to pain. And when you compare to hyaline articular cartilages, they are avascular, and they don't have any nerve supply, so definitely they are uh, not sensitive to pain, okay. So they, are, they mainly depend upon the, the nourishment, mainly they de depend upon the synovial fluid. The next feature is where from where these fluids are secreted. So when you see the joint capsule, the inner lining of the joint capsule, you see one, a membrane called a synovial membrane. So in the picture you can see over there uh, with the reddish or pinkish line on the inner aspect of the joint capsule. So that is nothing but the synovial membrane. So they mainly line the joint capsule, but they are not present in the bony margin or the articular areas, only lining the inner aspect of the joint capsule. So these are called as synovial membrane. So their main function is to secrete synovial fluid. Then the next feature is around the capsule, you see some pockets, okay, so which are filled with synovial fluid, and these pockets are called as bursae. So again, these bursae helps in extra protection uh, because around the joints you will be seeing the, there are many ligaments because when you see joint capsule again they are reinforced by some ligaments 
So you will be learning in different joints. There are, there are some ligaments which are comes under true, some under false or accessory. Okay, true ligaments are nothing but the joint capsule which will reinforce to form a ligament and there can be some extra or intracapsular ligaments. And you also see the muscles which forms a tendon and they pass around the joints. So these pockets, synovial pockets, they wrap around the tendons and they form a sheet given an extra protection there so that during the movement there should not be any injury or a damage to these tendons. Then the other, as you also, you know that synovial joint, it comes under diarthrosis. That means it's freely movable. So these are some of the features of synovial joint. So again, this picture shows the same, all the features. You're seeing a joint space. Then you're seeing a joint capsule. And along with that, you're seeing some ligaments also where it is labeled in the picture. Then you see a green lining within the joint capsule. So that is nothing but the synovial membrane. And the bluish uh, margin which you're seeing uh, lining the, uh, the bony margins, they are nothing but the articular cartilage. So this is the bursae, as I mentioned earlier, the, the pockets which are filled with synovial fluid, their main function is to reduce the friction. Now, what are the classification of synovial joints? Because these are the most evolved and most of the joints present in the body is synovial. So depending upon the structure, the articular surfaces, okay, so they are classified into different types. Plane, hinge, pivot, condylar, sad, uh, saddle, ellipsoid, and ball and socket. The plane, the name tells that the bony surfaces, the bony margins are just straight and they mainly form a gliding joints. So the articular surfaces are plane. They may help in uh, gliding movements at the various direction. So the example for the plane synovial type, as you can see, this is the hand. These are the hand bones. So here you can see the carpal bones. So there are different carpal bones over here. So between the carpals, the surfaces are plane and they help in gliding movements. So these are called as intercarpal joints. Then plane is also seen in sternoclavicula, that is between the clavicle and the sternum. Okay, so there also you see a plane type and also between the intervertebrae. Okay, so you might ask, I have told that between the vertebra, those are called as cartilaginous, the secondary cartilaginous. So that is between the body. So these are the two thoracic vertebra, which I am showing here. So these are the bodies of thoracic vertebra. So there is a disc. So this comes under cartilaginous joint, secondary cartilaginous. So along with that, there is there are joints between the articular process which are present in the pedicle. Okay. So I think uh, you can see here, so there are two, the superior articular surface and inferior articular surface. So between these two articular surfaces, you see the plain type of synovial joint. So these joints mainly help in gliding movements because the surfaces are plain. The next is hinge type. So why it's called hinge joint? So you can compare with a door. So the door is connected uh, with a, uh, a material called as a hinge and you, that helps in opening and uh, closing. So similarly, when you see this joint, it is similarly like that. So very good example is the elbow joint, which is between the lower end of humerus and the upper and upper ends of radius and ulna, radius and ulna. So they form a hinge and it is like a pulley shaped and when you see the movements, it depends, the movements are uh, classified means are according to the axis. The movements occur in different axes. Some are on the horizontal axis or vertical axis. Okay, so when you see the elbow joint, the only movement is at one axis. So this is the flexion and extension. So flexion and extension, which is occurring at the one axis, that's why the movement is only uniaxial, so the uniaxial type. And the example is elbow joint. Also in the lower limb, you see the ankle joint. So there also you see plantar flexion. You don't call it as flexion and extension over there. So if you imagine this is a foot, you have plantar flexion and dorsal. 
and also between the interphalangeal joints. So interphalangeal is these are the phalanges of the hand. So these are the carpal bones. This is metacarpal, and these are the phalanges. So here also you see hinge type, which mainly helps in flexion and extension. The next type is pivot joints. So here the pivot, there is a central axis, okay, which is surrounded by osseofibrous structure. So there is part of bone, and it is completed by a membrane or a ligament. Or so you will be seeing osseo ligamentous uh, structure and a central axis, and the movement occurs within that central axis. So the very good example is superior radio ulnar joint, which you can see over here. That is between the head of the radius and the ulna. So the head of the radius acts like a pivot, okay? And there is a ligament around this, which is called as annular ligament, and this mainly helps in sup the supination and pronation. So the head moves within this axis and helps in supination and pronation. So supination and pronation movement. So it is, as I mentioned earlier, it is also assisted by the interosseous membrane between the radius and ulna. The other example is between the first and the second cervical vertebra. The first and second cervical vertebra is also called has. The first cervical vertebra is called as the atlas, and the second is called as the axis. They have an axis over here, which is called as dense, which articulates over here. And again, this is uh, the so at the back, uh, uh, here you'll be seeing the bony structure and then the ligament uh, completing the joint. And this moves like this within the, uh, within the axis. Okay, so this mainly helps in the no movement which you do, which you turn your head like this. So this is mainly helped by atlantoaxial joint. The next type is condylar. It's also called as bicondylar because sometimes there can be two condyles. So here the articular surfaces, you'll be seeing two convex surfaces, okay, which are called as condyles, which will be fitting with the uh, concave uh, surfaces, which is also called as condyles. So the one, the one of the condyle will be convex, the other condyle will be concave. So this is basically seen in knee joint. And again, this joint is uniaxial where the movement occurs at one axis. That is mainly flexion and extension. And a little bit rotation, but the main action is flexion and extension. So that's why this joint is also uh, comes under uniaxial type. The other is, which is seen in the temporomandibular joint, okay, here in the face. So that mainly helps in opening and closing of the mouth. So there also you see the condyles. Uh, the, the condyle is in the mandible and that articulates with the, uh, the temporal bone. <coughs> so temporomandibular joint and knee joint are classified under condylar type. The next is ellipsoid type, also called as condyloid. So here also you see the articular surface, somewhat similar to condyle, but here when you see the, the, the convex surface is more oval and the concave surface is more elliptical type. It will be uh, elliptical uh, uh, compared to the condylar type. So articular surface includes an oval convex surface fitting into an elliptical concave surface. This joint it is somewhat similar to condylar, but when you see condylar, it was uniaxial uh, type of uh, movement. But here, the movement occurs uh, by uh, biaxial. There will be movements which occurs in two axes. So the example is wrist joint, which, which is between the lower end of radius and the carpal bones, the proximal uh, row of carpal bones. So this is a wrist joint where the movement occurs. This is flexion, extension, and also the lateral deviation. So the movements occurs in two axes. So that's why this is a biaxial type of joint. Other example is between the metacarpal and the phalangeal joints, metacarpophalangeal joints. And also, there's a joint between the atlas. So I, all, uh, I had told the first cervical vertebra is also called as atlas. So that, this articulates with the occipital bone, and they mainly help in S movement, okay, which is uh, the joint is called as atlanto-occipital joint. So these are the examples for condyloid or ellipsoid type of joint. Next is saddle joint, okay. So here 
the articular surfaces is concave or convex so this is seen here in the first thumb so you can see the surface over here so it is not totally concave and convex over when you see the articular surface is concave or convex you can see even in the picture over there okay the surface is concave or convex and this the saddle type is seen only here in the thumb so that is carpo metacarpal joint of the thumb region <coughs> next is the ball and socket so here this is a unique joint having more movement at different axis so that's why this is called as a multi axial joint a uh, very good example is the shoulder joint okay so which is between the scapula and the humerus so the name only tells you there's a ball okay which will be art articulating with the socket so this is the head of the humerus and this is the glenoid surface of the scapula so this fits in like this when you see glenoid surface is not so deep but again this uh, the socket is made deeper by uh, other capsule around that the joint capsule the glenoid labrum all those so you will be learning in those things in the shoulder joint okay so this is a type of ball and socket the other example is in the hip joint which is in the uh, lower limb between the head of the femur and the acetabulum of the hip bone so why it's called multi axial i have told earlier so the movements occurs in different axes okay so the flexion extension then adduction abduction then circumduction so these are the movements which are occurring in these joints so they are called as multi axial so that's about the synovial joints and their classification now the how these synovial joints uh, they can move uh, they can help uh, they can permit a free move, uh, movements so one is all i have already told they have a very good lubrication which is mainly provided by the synovial fluid which contains a hyaluronic acid so this this provides a lubrication just as you see in any automobile if they have to move freely they need a good lubrication okay so you put different kinds of oil so that they can move smoothly so similarly for the joints since you use for different movements so they even they should have a good lubrication so that is mainly provided by the synovial fluid and also the bony margins you know that bone is a tough structure okay so since they are lined covered by articular cartilage which is hyaline so this forms a cushion or a slippery surface which also helps in free movements coming to the blood supply of the synovial joint they are supplied by branches coming from the arteries around the joint so they give branches which are called as articular and epiphyseal branches so they supply the joints and they the blood supply uh, richly supplies the joint capsule so they pierce the capsule and they supply but when you see the articular cartilages are avascular and they totally depend on the nourishment on the synovial fluid <clears throat> the next is nerve supply so capsule and ligaments are richly supplied with the nerves the branches coming from the nerves which are uh, present near the joints and when you see synovial membrane which is lining within the inner aspect of the joint capsule they are they have a very poor nerve supply that's why they are insensitive to pain but joint capsule have a very good supply so they are sensitive to pain and also these nerve flexors they also elicit different reflexes you will be learning in nervous system different reflexes so which are through the ligaments and uh, uh, the capsules which are present over there which elicit different reflexes as a protective mechanism again articular cartilages has no supply totally insensitive and there are articular nerves they are sensory in nature and uh, that's mainly proprioceptive where you can sense the joint movements and also they have autonomic fibers which mainly helps has a vasomotor or a vaso sensory so this is about the nerve supply of the joints <coughs> uh, there is usually there is a law which is called as hilton's law uh, in relation to the nerve supply of the joint so whatever the motor nerves when you see there are different muscles which acts on the joint for the movement okay if you see flexion 
is mainly help may, can be helped by the muscles of the arm region okay so whatever the motor supply to those muscles of the arm region they usually supply the give a branch to the joints which where the muscles are acting up so the motor nerve to the muscle acting on the joint tendons will give a branch to that particular joint where the muscles are acting and another branch to the skin covering the joint so this is called has a hilton's law so it applies to all the joints throughout our body stability of the synovial joint one is def uh, definitely depends upon the muscles so the muscles they mainly help to maintain the tone and uh, the tone of different groups of the muscles they mainly act on the joint and the stability is maintained and as i mentioned earlier around the capsule there are different ligaments there can be reinforcement of these capsule thickening of the capsule so which is called as true ligaments other than that there are other accessory ligaments around the joint they also provide a uh, good stability for uh, for the synovial joint so they they are very important in preventing over movement the tone also helps in uh, uh, reducing the over movement and also the ligaments and the articular surfaces of the bony margin since they are lined by articular cartilage so these are the certain features present in synovial joint which gives extra stability now why you have to know the joints why we mentioned all these features so this you can correlate with different uh, clinical aspect applied aspect you will come across uh, especially in the orthopedic department the patient might come with a Uh, complain of dislocation of the joint so what do you mean by dislocation you know that joint means there will be there is a union or a fusion between the bones so whenever it is the, when the articular surfaces are abnormally displaced so that is called as dislocation of the joint okay sometimes the dislocation can be complete dislocation or sometimes it will be a partial contact might be retained so that will be called as subluxation so all these terms you will come across once you go to the clinical side the other uh, clinical aspect related to joint is sprain okay so this is the sprain is not a dislocation means the, the articular surfaces are not dislocated here this can be due to uh, some uh, vigorous movement or a very uh, an abnormal movement can lead into the ligament tear okay around a tear in the capsule okay so there can be a severe pain so this condition is called as sprain so which you commonly see at the ankle joint ankle sprain okay the next clinical aspect just you all commonly you have heard about this arthritis which is inflammation of joint there are different types of arthritis depending upon the causes so one is the one which is very common during old age due to wear and tear of the articular cartilages as i as you i have mentioned articular cartilages form a uh, they form a covering uh, uh, in the bony margin so which acts like a cushion right so due to the uh, involvement due to the more movement so what happens there will be a wear and tear in the cartilage and slowly it uh, gets damaged and disappears so which is very common in old age and when we see it's very common in women compared to men so this is called as osteoarthritis so it is depicted in the picture you can see a normal joint how it looks what are the features and when you see in osteoarthritis there is totally uh, tear of the <clears throat> there is no you won't see any articular cartilages and the bony margins are very close together so usually the patient might present with uh, the joint pain then there, there might be stiffness and they have difficulty the range of motion will be minimized so these are some of the symptoms which the patient might present the other type is an inflammatory type which is called as a rheumatoid arthritis so it's an autoimmune disorder a certain uh, in, there are some condition where our own immune system body immune system attack our own bony uh, tissues of our body so sometimes this our own immune system can damage the synovial mainly it uh, damages the synovial membrane and this condition is called as rheumatoid arthritis <clears throat> which is an in inflammatory one so it definitely it attacks the synovial membrane and again the patient might have difficulty in movement they can have stiffness especially the stiffness is more commonly seen during morning time which is called as morning stiffness so suddenly when they have to move the joint they have difficulty 
So, and there are other uh, infectious arthritis. There are different types, as I mentioned, but most common one are osteo and rheumatoid arthritis. Next uh, clinical aspect which I would like to speak is about the arthroscopy. So, this is a procedure. Uh, it's a surgical procedure mainly used by the orthopedician to visualize the joint uh, cavity. So, here mainly it is used for examination, uh, that is to visualize and uh, to diagnose or sometimes it can be used for the treatment purpose also. So, this is a procedure mainly uh, done, done surgically that is called as arthroscopy. <coughs> The next is called as arthroplasty. So here this is a reconstructing uh, uh, procedure or a replacement of joint if, there, if the joint is totally damaged and the patient needs for a replacement or a reconstruction. So the procedure is called as arthroplasty. So when, whenever they ha it has to be replaced, so they will be using a prosthesis which you can see in the picture. A prosthesis used especially for the hip joint over here. So, this procedure is called as arthroplasty. So, these are some of the clinical terms which are used in relation to joint. So, arthro means joint. <clears throat> so, finally, to summarize, we have learnt the general features of synovial joint in detail, but you have to know the general broad classification of joint, that is mainly the structural classification, the fibrous, cartilaginous and synovial. You have to know what are the general features of synovial, why you classify this particular joint under synovial and the different classification of or different types of synovial joint according to their structure and uh, the shape of the bony margins. Uh, so, this is the, the next clinical aspect, just you all commonly you have heard about this, arthritis which is inflammation of joint. There are different types of arthritis depending upon the causes. So, one is the one which is very common during old age due to wear and tear of the articular cartilages. As I as you have mentioned, articular cartilages form a, uh, they form a covering uh, uh, in the bony margin, so which acts like a cushion, right? So, due to the uh, involvement, due to the more movement, so what happens, there will be a wear and tear in the cartilage and slowly it uh, gets damaged and disappears, so which is very common in old age and when we see it's very common in women compared to men. So this is called as osteoarthritis. So it is depicted in the picture, you can see a normal joint, how it looks, what are the features and when you see in osteoarthritis, there is totally uh, tear of the, <clears throat> there is no, you won't see any articular cartilages and the bony margins are very close together. So usually the patient might present with the uh, the joint pain, then there, there might be stiffness and they have difficulty, the range of motion will be minimized. So, these are some of the symptoms which the patient might present. The other type is an inflammatory type which is called as a rheumatoid arthritis. So, it's an autoimmune disorder. A certain, uh, in, there are some conditions where our own immune system, body immune system attack our own bony uh, tissues of our body. So, sometimes this, our own immune system can damage the synovial, mainly it uh, damages the synovial membrane and this condition is called as rheumatoid arthritis, <clears throat> which is an in inflammatory one. So, it definitely it attacks the synovial membrane and again the patient might have difficulty in movement, they can have stiffness, especially the stiffness is more commonly seen during morning time, which is called as morning stiffness. So, suddenly when they have to move the joint, they have difficulty. So, and there are other uh, infectious arthritis. There are different types as I mentioned, but most common one are osteo and rheumatoid arthritis. Next uh, clinical aspect which I would like to speak is about the arthroscopy. So, this is a procedure. Uh, it's a surgical procedure mainly used by the orthopedician to visualize the joint uh, cavity. So, here mainly it is used for examination uh, that is to visualize and uh, to diagnose or sometimes it can be used for the treatment purpose also. So, this is a procedure mainly uh, done, done surgically that is called as arthroscopy. <coughs>
So next is called as arthroplasty. So here this is a reconstructing uh, uh, procedure or a replacement of joint if, there, if the joint is totally damaged and the patient needs for a replacement or a reconstruction. So the procedure is called as arthroplasty. So when, whenever they ha it has to be replaced, so they will be using a prosthesis which you can see in the picture. A prosthesis is used especially for the hip joint over here. So this procedure is called as arthroplasty. So these are some of the clinical terms which are used in relation to joint. So arthro means joint. <clears throat> so finally, to summarize, we have learned the general features of synovial joint in detail, but you have to know the general broad classification of joint, that is mainly the structural classification, the fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial. You have to know what are the general features of synovial, why you classify this particular joint under synovial, and the different classification of or different types of synovial joint according to their structure and uh, the shape of the bony margins. So this is about the general anatomy of joint. Thank you.